Welcome to a new Vollog. Today we're doing a teardown of an automotive ECU that stands for engine control unit. Every car has one of these unless it's very old and doesn't have any electronic control of the engine. This is a small computer that reads a bunch of sensors like air temperature, air pressure, fuel pressure, RPMs, crankshaft position, pedal position and various other sensors and then based on all of these inputs uh, it will calculate uh, various parameters and control outputs like the fuel pump, the injectors, uh, the spark plugs or other outputs. I've never opened one of these up but we should find something interesting to see in here at least from the point of view of construction methods because uh, these things need to run smooth even in the hardest condition like very hot weather or very cold weather as well as endure water pouring right onto them all while withstanding high levels of mechanical shock and vibrations. So it's likely we will see a nice seal uh, on the enclosure as well as conformal coating on the PCB we find inside and maybe uh, some special assembly th techniques on that PCB to improve reliability. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solar mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper, so it's definitely worth checking them out. Now what we find inside might differ a lot depending on the generation of the ECU. Older ones having to use more discrete components, while newer ones are integrating a lot of components into a single chip. And I've worked briefly for Freescale which was building such a newer chip in partnership with Bosch and it was amazing the level of integration. Uh, they had everything from multiple MOSFET drivers, differential amplifiers for current sensing with programmable gain, they had a DC to DC boost converter as well as a multi-core processor uh, all integrated under the same chip. As you can imagine this can save quite a bit of money for the uh, manufacturers of these ECUs and on the final build uh, that's gonna put money in their pocket. So that's the direction things are heading now. The one I have here is from an Audi A6 model C5 which was manufactured between 1997 and 2004. This one is likely made in uh, 2001 judging by a date code I see here on the label and it's from a uh, 2.5 liter TDI engine. I got it from one of these auto dismantling businesses from eBay. I don't know if it's ever uh, been opened uh, before but we shall find out soon. There is a feature that uh, got my attention uh, here and uh, this looks uh, like it's uh, some kind of vent for condensation. So if you have uh, condensation build up inside it will be able to escape through this special vent that can leave small vapors uh, get out but doesn't leave water uh, get in from the outside. So if uh, we look on the back, we have these four torque screws. So let's try to remove them and see if we can gain access. Yep, I can feel a something like a silicone seal squealing while I try to pry this thing open. I wonder what type of seal this is because it's this very it, it remained very soft it didn't harden like a, a typical silicon adhesive would it is still very soft and here is that uh, humidity vent that I was telling you about you can see it communicates with the uh, interior which is completely sealed from the outside but moisture which gathers inside the enclosure can get out through this seal. And this is the engine control unit in all its glory. 
let's take a closer look at some of these uh, components and uh, try to identify them. The first chip that caught my attention is this one right here is marked AE4525. I couldn't find any info on a quick Google search but it's interesting how this has its own small ceramic substrate so I would imagine this is some kind of sensor maybe a pressure sensor so let me know in the comments if you know more about these parts that we find on the PCB. Then we have a couple of crystal oscillators and each one of these have their own small mounting base. I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe it's for mechanical uh, stability because like I said this thing will see quite a lot of vibrations during its lifetime. We have some unpopulated uh, footprints on this side and uh, that is because often they design these uh, ECU systems which are capable of controlling up to, I don't know, a V6 or a V8 engine but they also want to install it on a four-cylinder engine so they can recover the investment. So you don't populate all the output drivers. It's interesting to see the paste coverage they have in the stencil for these um, high power packages. Uh, this is like maybe 30% coverage on the tab so it's a good lesson if you're designing your own footprints uh, you don't need 100% coverage in fact it's bad if you have 100% coverage uh, on the uh, exposed pads. Next we have an NEC uh, branded chip uh, which has what looks like a Bosch custom part number. I don't know the function of this chip but could be some type of uh, interface chip. Next we have a 4 megabit uh, flash memory chip and right next to it uh, we have a big processor made by Infineon. Now Infineon is an important player in the automotive uh, market and this chip is likely an automotive tailored microcontroller with specific features like uh, maybe numerous ADC inputs, numerous PWM outputs, it can interface a uh, SPI interface as well as an external memory interface for this uh, external flash chip. On this other side we have three chips in some high power packages that is judging by the uh, heavy thermal pads um, they have on the PCB. Uh, these are either Bosch or Infineon branded chips and uh, they will likely be output drivers for various things like pumps, uh, injectors, uh, and other stuff requiring high current switches. These will be specifically designed for this task and might integrate multiple MOSFETs and required bootstrap circuits under the same package. This right here is a diode. It could be a Xenor diode or a TVS protection diode and it's likely connected on the uh, battery input uh, to this ECU because we can see some heavy uh, copper pads in here and uh, a big filtering caps so this is likely the battery input to the uh, ESC. One thing is certain this is a high power package diode uh, I believe it's DO218. We also uh, saw these 100 microfarads uh, electrolytic capacitors in here they are 40 volts rated and in general that's the rating at least the minimum rating for all of the parts that are used in automotive systems but you can bet these are the most uh, reliable capacitors uh, you can get and I've looked at uh, this uh, part number uh, they are made by Vichy slash BC components and a datasheet for these is available online. I'm also seeing a couple of uh, tantalums on this PCB they are made by Epcos and this is something I wouldn't have expected but I'm sure these are top quality tantalums uh, correctly qualified and rated for this type of systems. Throughout the board we have a mix of uh, melt resistors but also more modern chip resistors and resistor networks in a 0805 package. I think they are using mostly melt resistors because of their increased reliability, higher power rating but in general higher reliability must be the main reason they are using them. On the back of uh, this board um, we have mostly passives, resistors and capacitors and a few more um, unidentifiable chips. But you can really get a sense of the uh, soldering 
quality job on this PCB. It's very high quality and it's unlikely you will see a uh, failing soldering joint on, on this type of uh, ECU PCB. We also noticed that on the back they have attached these large additional copper planes on the sides and I can think of two reasons to do this. One is for mechanical reason to maybe improve the stiffness on the side of the board and second is for thermal reasons because these are right under the high power uh, devices so maybe they are using these to increase the thermal capability of the PCB. The PCB itself is of uh, superb quality. This is not your typical FR4 TG140 rated fiberglass board that you get for your hobby projects. Uh, this is most certainly some higher quality and better rated uh, fiberglass uh, material and I'm guessing we have at least a four layer stack up here. And I guess one last thing I should mention is the big ass connector. Uh, this is uh, certainly a custom job uh, for uh, did for, for Bosch, but I believe the manufacturer is Amphenol as I see a couple of amp uh, markings on the uh, connector. Uh, you can see this is really a high pin count package and it has to be uh, watertight and really reliable. So that's about all we have in this engine control unit, which is manufactured around uh, the year 2000. Of course, more modern engine control units uh, are likely to have a higher level of integration and they might uh, be looking different inside, but uh, those are uh, too expensive to be purchased just for the purpose of uh, research. I hope you found this uh, video interesting. I would certainly appreciate uh, your uh, feedback left in the comments below and maybe hit the thumbs up button to let me know you like these types of uh, videos. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.